everyone, this is Fish Forever and in today's video I'm going to show you a very easy way to hatch these right here, Artemia cysts, also known as brine shrimp. So traditionally, people will feed their fish flash frozen brine shrimp due to the inability to find live ones in stores. They also don't want to go through the hassle of buying a lot of extensive hatchery setups to do so as well. So today I will show you how I hatch and feed my fish brine shrimp with a minimalistic approach. Okay, so this is everything that you will need to hatch your brine shrimp. The first thing would of course be the brine shrimp. This is the brand Biney, I found it on Amazon. Some of its claims is that it's easy to hatch, has a high hatch rate and that it of course has a high nutrition value. And this is half an ounce. You're also going to need something to put the brine shrimp in. I'm just using this 18 fluid ounce container, a scooper, some kind of pipette. I'm using a turkey baster. Optionally, you can use some baking salts if your pH is lower than 8.0. Some aquarium salt, you can also use table salt. And then I'm just using some binder clips to hold up the container. So the reason why this method is not traditional is because there are three main components of hatching brine shrimp properly. These include the salinity of the water, which is the concentration of salt in the water the temperature, and the pH. Without the proper conditions, the brine shrimp will not be able to break out of their shells, therefore they will die. But this is the closest way that I can get to hatch the shrimp without needing extensive equipment. The process itself is very simple. You're just gonna take the container and add a binder clip to the front of it. This is basically just going to act as a little ledge, that way it doesn't fall into the tank. Now we are going to be adding the aquarium salt. The measurements for salinity is 1 and 2 thirds tablespoon of salt per 1 quart of water, so that's 4 cups or 32 ounces. And since this is an 18 ounce container, I'm going to be adding roughly 2 and a half teaspoons of aquarium salt. This is about how much salt I will be using. I roughly estimated it as I do bake sometimes. At this point, you'd add your baking soda. If your pH is under eight, it would be one half teaspoon per four cups. Of course, everybody's pH of their water is different. By the way, I also wanted to mention, you don't have to use your aquarium water for this. You could also just use traditional tap water. If you're adding baking soda into the little concoction and putting it into your tank, you wanna be very careful that this does not spill into your tank. Some fish are more sensitive to baking soda than others. Now that the salt is added, I'm going to be adding some water in. Just for the start, I'm going to be adding in about one ounce of water and just dissolving this. Okay, and now that the salt is fully dissolved, we're going to be adding the little container into the tank. Now the best way to do this is to just place it vertically so no air bubbles form underneath and basically just start filling it up with the aquarium water, just about halfway. You could also just pour some water into it. Now of course the container will float on top like this but having this right here will just ensure that nothing falls down. Be sure to keep it underneath the light as an optimum temperature for hatching the brine shrimp is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That is actually another reason why putting it inside of the tank would be very useful for this process because since I already have an aquarium heater, it's almost like I'm acclimating it at all times. All right, and now for the final part, we will be opening the brine shrimp eggs. There are preparations on this packaging, which I highly appreciate, but I like to make everything look very nice and neat, so I'm using a pair of scissors for this. It's also very handy because this packaging has a zipper on top. All right, let's see how these look. Now I suspect these eggs to just look like dirt, but let's open it up and take a look. All right, and my suspicion was correct. It just looks like very fine grain sand. Pretty hard to believe that there are living creatures right here in front of us. I'm just going to eyeball the amount of brine shrimp I place into the little hatchery that we created, but the amount will depend on how many you want, so don't overload it. I'm just going to be using that much. See, they're just very microscopic little looking 
beads. Make sure you take into consideration that not 100% of them will hatch, so put a little bit more than you think you will need. But nevertheless, there we go. They will float on top, so make sure that you kind of maneuver them around like this. And make sure they are spread evenly in the water. I'm just gonna place my lid back on here very, very carefully. And the purpose of this binder clip is right here so that when you close your lid, it still has this little latch here to make sure that the container does not fall into the tank, like that. All right, this is pretty much what the enclosed setup looks like. We have the hatchery right underneath the light. And by the way, I'm doing this fairly early in the day, that way the light will be on them for roughly eight to 10 hours. I really like using this hatchery setup as well because it fits very tightly with the lid and my lid is clear so I can see what's going on on top. After you're done setting up the little hatchery, you're going to place the whole container in a Ziploc bag and store it in a place that's less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So for me, that's going to be my fridge. All right, and at this point, we've created life. I'm just joking, but we will check in with this in about 36 hours. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer depending on how warm your water is or how cold it is, but I will get back to you as soon as I see the first hatchling. All right, so this is about 20 hours in. We already have a few that have hatched. There are just some slight movements around, such as right there, and pretty much just everywhere. So I'll get to you guys back in about five more hours to see if any more have hatched. All right, and this is officially 24 hours after placing the eggs into the little solution that we made of just salt and water. I would say that the claim that greater than 90% of them will hatch is definitely true because as you can see here, we have thousands of baby brine shrimp. I don't even think I'll be able to feed all of these to my fish, although they look very hungry. <laughs> but there are so many of them in here. So all of the little brine shrimp are swimming on the top to middle range of the little container. And at the bottom are the little eggshells that they popped out of. We just have to be very careful when putting our pipette in there to not disturb the contents that has settled at the bottom. All right, and this is about 48 hours after putting it inside of the hatchery. I think it's safe to say pretty much over 95% of them hatched out. I have some hungry fish there to the left, but yeah, this is how they're all looking. So at this point, you're safe to feed them to your fish. However, if you want to grow them out, you can feed them some crushed up algae wafers or some boiled egg yolk. Now, when feeding this to your fish, you obviously don't want to feed them any of the shells, which have surfaced to the top and some are at the bottom. An option for removing it or separating it would just be shining a flashlight at the bottom and having all the brine shrimp swim there since they're attracted to light. In my case, most of the eggshells are at the top rims, so I won't have to worry too much about it. Just one more note before feeding this, remember that this water possibly had a lot of salt in it. So if you have any fish or invertebrates in your tank that are sensitive to that, make sure you rinse them out first. So that's going to be everything for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Follow my Instagram at fishforeverchannel and I'll see you guys next time.